The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. Now, folks, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, you know, instead of to us, it's happening for us. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much, much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there too. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices. Well, I take that back. The semiconductor index is in the red. But all the other indices are in the green. Now, they're off their highs. The question is, about uh, two minutes ago, we saw the uh, signing of the uh, China-U.S. deal, whatever that deal is. And is this a sell-the-news event? Is it a sell-the-news event? Well, we'll try to answer that question. Of course, we want to answer all of the questions that uh, folks have out there. And the first question really came in from Ian. Now, this came in early this morning, and I do mean early, um, because it was yesterday. How was that? But Ian writes in, uh, and uh, he, Ian writes in and says, uh, can, we, can we take a look at the XLE and the USO from a one-hour daily where support for long-term purchase? So USO is going to be the... The long the ETF for going light uh, long light speed crude next LE is the energy sector. So let's do this, Ian. I do want to give you what you want, but I, but to give you the one hour for USO, it really means we should look at the one hour for light sweet crude. So we'll do that. But let's go take a look at the XLE, the energy sector, inside the S&P 500, get a feel for what it's doing daily, weekly, and monthly. And here what we can see on this uh, set of charts here, we can see prices below support on the daily time frame. That would be below the bottom of its uh, bearish structured box. Now, what I want to do here, when that's, that's the left-hand panel that you're looking at, when price moved below that, and it gapped down below that, did that here on the trading day of uh, December 30th, when there was a counter trend rally. See how this was a bullish structured profile out here? And, and when you do close below a bullish structured profile, certainly two days in a row out there, it's telling you about a change in trend. With regard to counter trend rallies, bullish in structure because that center at 61.33 was closer to the bottom at 61.01 versus 62.12. So now having looked at millions of these charts out here with bullish or bearish structures and the counter trend rally moves, there's really two levels of resistance. The first level would be the bottom of the box and the second level would be the secondary resistance would be the center of its box. Now I've seen this work on bullish and bearish structured profiles more often than not. And your real sell area is in that center. Granted, at the center of the box, you have both buyers and sellers, but those buyers had failed to hold that support level, that being the bottom of the box, when price moved back below it. So here in the XLE, and I just want to point this out to you and everybody else that's watching us on Tiger TV, so that when you see these profiles, we pull them up. You're asking for places to you know, go long or go short, because it, this is all about identifying find support and resistance. So not unusual to see what we see here on the daily time frame chart for the XLE. 
When we look at the weekly time frame chart, price is back inside its range, its range being the top of the profile at 60.07 down to the bottom at 56.45. Now that too is a bullish structured box. So this would say that if we're trying to just use market profiles to understand where price could push lower, it'd be back to probably the 57.36 area, the center of that box. Now on a monthly time frame chart, for now this is the one, two, three, four, five, let's say six month in a row for a half a year, take a look at how the bottom of that profile, and there, again, there's a bullish structured uh, box out here. Take a look at uh, each time price got below the bottom of the box, how basically the center of that box in the 63, uh, 20, 63.36 area acted as a selling area, a counter trend rally area. So the XLE uh, is looking like it wants to trade lower, Ian. Uh, so if we take a look at Stevie's other charts to see if there's any other patterns that might be out here on the energy sector, price is pulling back. You want to watch the 58.84 level. That's its breakout area, that breakout set up by our TD set up nine count. So that could be if you're looking to buy, which I think you are, watch 58.84. If price closes below that, well, then these other levels on the daily or the weekly profile, 57.36, 56.45 become the targets. But this lines up nicely with regard to that bullish structured monthly or weekly profile we're looking at. If we look at the weekly chart out here, the weekly chart shows us that 59.10 is its oscillator on change line. You know, that could be a level of support. The weekly chart is certainly showing a bottoming pattern out here. So, uh, and, and when we took a look at the bullish structured weekly profile, that kind of makes some sense out here, but it does look like we've got a further pullback. And on the monthly time frame. granted the monthly, we're only halfway through the month out here, but here's what we know about the monthly time frame is that price has tested and rejected Stevie's red line. That's at about 59 96 so about 60 bucks out there so uh, now you wanted me to take a look at light sweet crude what is light sweet because of the directional correlation out here you wanted a one hour uh so let me give you the one hour time frame for light sweet crude let's pull that over here see if we can do that here's what the one hour chart for light sweet crude tells us then we'll go take a look at the daily weekly profiles out there anything else that we can see now we saw that light sweet crude did try to form a bottom with rose momentum indicator pattern now this was yesterday well that was a few days ago right uh, when was it Yesterday, January 14th. That seems like a few days ago. But what price did was, you know, never was able to get up to its breakdown level. Breakdown was 59.22 out here. You're trading back below that low from yesterday at 4 o'clock in the morning. So that's not really good. So it does look like light sweet crude, at least on the hourly chart out here, is suggesting that, uh, you know, wants to trade lower. Let's go look at the other time frames and go take a look at the market profiles. The market profiles here for light sweet crude. This is, we took a look at this, I believe, yesterday. Today, you got your daily and your weekly. Those are up at the top, your monthly and your quarterly down at the bottom. And uh, 5694 is a level that uh, we would be looking at for light sweet crude. So uh, XLE should or could, certainly the USO will take its cue. Uh, from uh, what Light Sweet Crude is doing here. So you're going to want to watch that 56.94. Now, price did get down close to that level. Today, it got down to 57.36 out there. So we're only talking about, what, 40 cents or, uh, well, no, the actual low, I take that back today, 57.36. Yeah. Uh, look, just, just pay attention to that. We don't see any kind of bottom as we speak just yet. Uh, maybe there's one in, coming in the next couple of days, but... Uh, USO, XLE, Light Sweet Crude, they all say they want some lower pricing. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to go take a look at MJ for Peak D in the den. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 114, S&P 7, NASDAQ 100 up 18 points. Let's go back in, uh, to our uh, questions out here. This one coming in from Peak D in the Tiger's Den. Now, Peak is asking about ticker symbol MJ, and the question is, uh, has it bottomed? But uh, in addition to answering has it bottomed, we've also got to answer the question, um, well, what else is it doing? Now, uh, this was no setup or anything, but when we went through that last segment, we were taking a look at the energy sector, XLE. Uh, and I want you to focus on the center chart here. The center chart for, uh, by the way, MJ is the alternative harvest ETF out there. Basically, it's the pot stock uh, group of uh, our stocks affecting, affecting that. Are, are inside that ETF. But uh, what I want you to do, we were looking at the XLE, and we were taking a look at uh, the weekly, uh, or whatever, I don't remember what time frame chart it was, we were looking at it was the weekly, that had that bearish structured profile, one of them, a bullish structured profile, and then price had closed below it. So if you take, a, and, then, and then what you and I did was we focused on the, the two levels of resistance for a counter trend move out here. So if we take a look at that center time frame chart for MJ, what we can see here is we can see that what price has done so far this week, and really it's today, uh, peak as it's run right up into resistance being the bottom of that previously, and it still is a bullish structured profile out here. That bottom is priced out at 1888. The actual high today so far is 1904. Now, remember, what I also said was that it's not unusual in just a counter trend rally for price to either find resistance there or at the center of that profile, 1969. Now, we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at the chart here for MJ, and we're going to see that there's bottoming patterns out there. But what you and I don't know at this stage here, is it the true bottom? Or are we just in this consolidation? And we really wouldn't know that until price got above 1969. So price at 1873 right now, would knowing that that could be the end of the counter trend rally or even today's high could be the end of the counter trend rally, would you enter a long position inside of MJ, even if I share with you that there's a bottom pattern in place out here? Now, that's a question that you have to make. When I take a look at the daily time frame chart, it's pretty easy to see the potential of a consolidation. So that potential, that consolidation really, really running from the bar out here, well, 
actually we've got to go back to the uh, lows from from November the 18th out here but take a look at the consolidation pattern and I'm just I'm just going to put a, a square around it it's in green we should probably change that to a different color right I mean just simply so uh, well why should we change it to a different color Steve -O? okay we won't we won't waste any time out there uh, just green candles but it's very possible peak that knowing that uh, what MJ has done is gotten up into resistance resistance area that that weekly profile and then when we take a look at the daily we can see the consolidation at the bottom that's clear uh, because we've had several tests inside the sixteen dollar area but now the and and granted prices moving higher doing with, with a good volume today now the volume at that potential top of the consolidation November 21st high which was 1898 had volume of about 3 million shares you're at 2.3 so it appears that price is pushing into that swing point with volume but doesn't mean that it's going to bust through it all it might mean is that it's just simply going to test it which it has done and if it rejects it which means a close below 1898 today and maybe it tests that 1890 a taste, I'm sorry, taste the, it tests the, uh, yeah, the 1898 level again tomorrow. But this could be a consolidation that's going on inside of alternative harvest along with bottoming patterns. Now, why would Steve-O even say there was bottoming patterns out here? Well, the answer is because of the rose momentum indicator pattern that formed on November 20th. It had both a bullish and gall, uh, bullish piercing candle out there so that confirmed it we've seen a number of bullish candles that have formed as prices pulled back into that level uh, ignore the red line now when I say ignore it ignore it because that really was a support level that should go back a bit further out here so we're not going to focus on that because we got that profile information really to use out here so is there a bottom yes has that bottom led to uh, a breakout no is it uh, possible that it's going to break out yeah do I know no. Do you know? Maybe you do. I don't know out here. So what do you do? If you're looking to enter into this thing, now is not the time to take that trade. Wait to see if this, in fact, is some type of consolidation. If, in fact, resistance uh, exists between, you know, up to 1969, and then we could take a look at uh, firing away or buying the bottom of that consolidation. So there's also a erosion of indicator bottom on the weekly time frame chart. So it is worth noting that if we do see price take out that prior swing point and get above this potential consolidation area, then what you should see is a run up to 26.18. But we just don't have that information as we speak right now, and we need to trade based upon the information that we have. So I hope that helps you out with regard to MJ. You also wanted to take a look at another symbol out here, so we'll do that, VIAV, VIAV. So let's go take a look at that. I'm getting my other charts here populated. Let's pull this up, see what this is. This is the uh, VIAV Solutions. Now, I think the question was buy, sell, or hold. So here's what we know. Price right now today is above the top of a daily profile. If it closes above 1539 peak, it's pretty simple. It says it wants to run higher. Now, higher to where? Well, the top of that weekly profile is 1602. It, look, this is playing the football game and exactly knowing where the yardage markers are. The yardage markers, in essence, are our profiles the top and the bottom of those boxes. You know where support is. You know where resistance is at. It's buyers and sellers. Whatever metaphor it is that you want to use. By the way, the monthly chart price above the uh, profiles out there, so no resistance, uh, so to speak, out there. Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. Trade down to 1552 as we speak right now. The question is buy, sell, or hold. Um, we can't say sell. I don't have a topping pattern out here. Um, and as long as price closes above the top of that daily box, um, it certainly is a hold if you have it. Is it a buy? You know, it depends on what if you're a momentum trader or not out here. But you've got resistance at 1602. You would have to do, and your average daily true range on this equity is 35 cents. So you're not at a bottom, that's for sure. You'd have to be willing to buy this on a breakout move. If you're a breakout trader, then you'd have to do the math to see if it's worth the reward risk because you know that there are sellers sitting at 1602. We don't know if those sellers can get taken out. We just know where they're at. And knowing where they're at, that's a powerful thing. At least I think that it's a powerful thing. I know that it's a powerful thing. Now, on the weekly time frame, uh, price is just underneath Stevie's green line. It has remained under Stevie's green line for a number of weeks out here. So if you were going to ask me, is there a reason to take that momentum trade to the upside right now, I'd have to say no. You would really need to see a close above 15... 50, well, let me do this here because I can't read it exactly. And I do not want to give you bad information. 
I'd rather give you no information than bad information. The number is 1559. You need to see a close about 1559 tomorrow because it's a weekly time frame chart to suggest that it, the uh, coast might be clear to take that momentum trade to the upside. Uh, with regard to the uh, monthly time frame, let's try to get a feel for what's going on out here. And the monthly time frame peak, what we know is this formed a TD setup nine count high. And it did it on bar number 10. Now remember, when you get any type of topping pattern, I don't care which one it is. I don't care if it's a Chapman wave topping pattern. I don't care if it's a Rose momentum topping pattern. I don't care if it's a TD nine count topping pattern. I don't care if it's the peak D topping pattern, whatever that might be. When you get a topping pattern, all it does is it gives sellers the freedom to try to push price down to support. Well, where's the first level of support? On VI, AV for its monthly time frame. Stevie's green line, which has already tested and rejected it. It is certainly not a sell, although it has topping conditions on the monthly time frame. But support, my friend, as hell. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Thank you, Steve. Uh, yes, thank you for taking the call. I'm sure. so great. And uh, Good. I just I tried to buy some puts on Navita NVDA yesterday, and I didn't feel it. It fell too quickly, and then this morning it rallied up, and I had a GTC. So I I filled on a 
February 7th foot spread at okay. 350 to 242. But I just wondered, what is that? What kind of a target would I look at at uh, 250 to 242? Yeah, so if we take a look at NVIDIA, I'm going to take a look at the daily time frame chart here. And uh, what this did two days ago was this confirmed roads momentum indicator um, sell signal. And it did that when it generated that bearish sash candle. And the reason was is because price was moving higher and doing it with less relative energy. Now, yesterday, I generated that bearish reversal candle. Price also closed right on Stevie's green line. So since it closed right on that, this was still, even though it had a sell signal, still bullish. Today, slightly different because price is now under Stevie's green line, which is priced at 247.91. So the green line or red line, whichever color it is right now, it's green, Ron. That would be level one of support. Then the second level we would look to would be our TAS market profiles. Well, it turns out that what NVIDIA has done today was form a new market profile. And the top of that box is 244.30. The low today is 244.53. So price is above that level of support because the top of the profile, which ordinarily would be resistance, it can't be ordinarily resistance in this case because it formed below price. So you're watching 244.30. If price were to close below 244.30, the second level of support will have failed. This is a bullish structured box. We had do have, on a daily basis. It does have a bearish pattern out there. So the only so price needs to close above the high from two days ago to suggest a further run because of that resistance that was established by that bearish sash candle. But if price closed below 244.30, price should run back to between 235. 61 and 237.79. Now, NVIDIA, Ron, is trading above the top of its weekly and its monthly profiles out there. So the question would be, hey, where's resistance on a weekly time frame? It's up at 292.76. That's where it had its TD nine count breakdown level. Uh, do I see a topping pattern uh, on the weekly time frame chart? And the answer is I do not. So this would bode well for price continuing to move higher, especially since right now price is above the top of that new daily profile at 244.30. So the daily says, uh, okay, I've got both. It's kind of like a little tug of war here. Bullish in a bearish pattern out there. The weekly is all out bullish. The monthly is also all out bullish. It's above the top of its box. It's above Stevie's green line, which is 217.28. And this suggests it wants higher price. So the answer to your question, Ron, really lies in between these values out here. The value is the top of the, uh, uh, the, the high on January 13th, 252.99. If price closes above that, then that would be a signal that price is going to continue to move higher. I'm assuming nothing else forms on the charts out here. Whereas if price falls below 244.30, then it says it will pull back to 235.61. So that's what I see when I take a look at the charts. Does that information Fantastic. help you? Thank you very much. It's extremely helpful. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, you betcha. You bet. Uh, best of luck with that trade. Thanks for uh, calling. That was Ron in uh, Denver. Now, we've got about six or seven requests out here. So thanks, everybody, for sending these requests. That means Stevie needs to get his, his uh, you know, his rear end in gear here. So let's get to it. The first one is uh, BAC and would like to know your analysis short term and midterm that is bank of america so a quick look at bank of america what do we know price may have found support today it's trading in between its dailies profile the bottom of which is 3450 the top of which is 3572 it's also trading in between its weekly profile that formed uh, this week that's between 3440 and 3539 so the analysis is right now what you've got at Bank of America is consolidation. I would say if price closed below 3440, certainly this week, then that could be suggesting a change in trend. Now, the change in trend may only take price back to the top of its monthly profile, which is 3305 out there. But at this stage here, consolidating daily and weekly, we can see where buyers and sellers are lined up. Was there a topping pattern? Well, price was moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. And what Bank of America actually did was it formed an island top yesterday. Well, it really was today. It had to be today. What do you mean, Steve-O? And is this at all-time highs? Just let me pull this back for Bank of No, it's not at all-time highs. I didn't think it was, but I just wanted to make sure out here. Take a look at um, two days ago, the high was 3507. Yesterday, the low 
for Bank of America was 35.11. So you've got a little bit of a gap in there, and that price gaps down today. So. Bank of America, because of that island top, if it can bust through support, support on the daily 3450, support on the weekly 3440, so we'll go with the 3440, which suggests that it wants to move lower out there. So again, here's kind of like NVIDIA. We've got a topping pattern, but we also have support that is held. Now, the weekly shows us that the pullback today was also to a level of support. The level of support was Stevie's green line on the weekly basis, 34.32. So this is showing us support out here with regard to Bank of America. So that's my analysis. Take a look at you wanted the intermediate term and the short term. And we're going to have to wrap it up there because of the other requests that we have in. And I wanted to simply get to those. The next one coming from Phil. Phil wants to take a look at uh, Nordic American tankers. Ticker symbol there is NAT. And the question is, I'm wondering if your tools show any positive features. Well, let's just go take a look at the tools. So Nordic American tankers, uh, below the bottom of its daily profile, been below it for about four days. Not good. Necessarily. When I say not good, it says it wants lower price. Well, lower price, where do we go to? Let's go to the next up time frame. That next time frame being the weekly time frame. Well, price is inside. It's a brand new, brand new box that formed this week. Price is below the top of that box at 448. This would suggest, Phil, that Nordic American tanks is pulling back into the 349 to 389 level. That's the center and the bottom of its profile out there. If we take a look at Nordic American tankers on the daily time frame, forms a Rhodes momentum indicator top, key reversal session, as well as a bearish engulfing candle out there. No sign of a bottom on the daily. Today's going to be bar number five of a potential TD set up nine count, but it's got several more days that it has to um, uh, complete before we can even determine whether that's a bottoming pattern. On the month, on the weekly pattern out here, a Rhodes momentum indicator top and price trading below Stevie's green line. This is suggesting to you and I, Phil, that this wants to head lower. So head lower, we take a look at those weekly profile again. That suggests Nordic American tankers, 389 to 349. You were asking for something to use the word positive. I'm assuming that you are long then. Um, you want me to be positive. I can be positive that the daily and the weekly have generated topping signals. And I can be positive that there is support between 349 and 389 on, North, um, on Nordic American tankers. So, Phil, thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out with regard to that trade. John in Sarasota wants to take a look at ticker symbol C-U-R-L-F out here. And... Uh, what might be in line for it? It's trading right now at 749, John. It's above the top of its daily, above the top of its weekly, especially if it can close above 704. Not enough information on the weekly. When we come back from this breakout here, we'll take a look at uh, Cure Leaf Holdings, C-U-R-L-F, my other set of charts to try to help out John in Sarasota. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Let's keep things rolling, 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 rawhide. Right now, we're taking a look at Curaleaf Holdings. Uh, C-U-R-L-F is a ticker symbol. And, uh, John, here's what it looks like to me. Again, price trade above the daily and the weekly profile. Looks like an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. The uh, price projection is 780, trading at 749 as we speak right now. Uh, not that it needs to form a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. It could be a 1 to 1.272. That would take you up to $84, $8.49 out there. But right now, we'll call that uh, first price target $7.80. That's what I see when I take a look at uh, Cura Leaf Holdings out there. I hope that helps you out. I know you want me to take a look at another one right now we've got a number of other questions that are in let me get to those first and if we've got time i'll go back and we'll take a look at expedia for you hd writes in and hd also has mj um looks like it's up pretty good today do you have a red or green line on this so we did cover mj you may not have heard it but let me just simply go back you're looking for a red or green line and in the case of mj let me just real quickly do this for you uh it is up nicely but what we were saying out here uh, hd is this could just be a good old-fashioned consolidation I want you to take a look at that daily time frame chart out here so make sure that you're tightening up your stops or i would suggest that you do that the reason that we say that is if we could take a look at the weekly chart it's run right Right into resistance there's really two levels of resistance out here that's 1888 and 1969 the bottom in the center of that bullish structured profile that price was able to close below so uh, and i don't know the answers you were asking about the red line or green line well the uh, I, I don't have the red line on the daily is well below price out here so i don't know why you would need that necessarily that's around 1687 um, which is the top of the uh, daily profile as well. It's above the red line on the weekly. And on the monthly, if you're looking for a target out here, that target of price can clear this potential consolidation area, uh, clear the re resistance levels of that weekly profile would be 2417 out there. So hope that that helps you out. Um, if you didn't get a chance, I went through MJ fairly extensively during the open. So maybe in about an hour, this show's recording will be up there and you can go back and take a look at that. Uh, Roger writes in and says, uh, what are the chances that today is a weekly or better high for stocks? A weekly or better high? Uh, Roger, weekly or better high? I think you 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 went to the Stevo school of typing out here. Your, your mind was saying one thing, but uh, your hands were typing something else. So how do I don't know how do I? What are the chances that today is a weekly? 
for better hyper stocks. Um, and, and of course, the, the the question would be, well, what's what's what indice is it that we that we would be looking at? Let me let me just do this for everybody out there because you're you're asking a general question out here. So let me give you. Let's start with the general response with regard to what are the markets doing right now? Granted. If we open up, we take a look at, you know, where, where our market's trading, for example. You've got the Dow up 122 points, above 29,000. Everything has hit a, well, I can't say everything's hit a, all, a, a new all-time high. But here's what we know. We open up this chart, or this set of tools, excuse me, this set of tools out here. We've got all the major U.S. indices, each of the sectors in the S&P 500. Then we have the equity futures contracts below that. In column number four from the left, you've got your daily roads momentum indicator signal. Look at all those topping signals, a plethora of topping signals. You've got the Dow Jones Industrials got a topping signal, the Russell, the, well, the XAU's had it for a while, the New York Stock Exchange, the semiconductors, the S&P 500. That's just on the daily time frame out there. You've got monthly signals. It just is a, it's very much a time of caution. These patterns can go away by price continuing to move higher as they have, but doing it with more relative strength. At this stage here, uh, those instruments have not. So your, if your question is now, where else do I go with that open-ended question out here? Um, if we just take a look at the equity futures contracts, let's just simply go there. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has arguably been the powerful one. And if we take a look at the NASDAQ, here's what we know. We know that today, well, we believe that today, is going to be bar nine of a TD set of nine count. Yesterday would have been high. Now, tomorrow could be that high. I don't know that because if there is a high on this pattern, it can occur on bars eight, nine, or ten. But right now, let's go with the information we have. We are going to have a nine count. The question is, is it going to be bar number eight or bar number 10 out there? Now, what price has also done today, it's pulled back and it's tested Stevie's green line, 90, 40, 75. Remember, that is like the first line of resistance out here. If we don't have any profiles to go take a look at, we're going to go take a look at profiles and see what's going on inside the daily chart for the NQ. Um, but what we would really need, uh, Roger, is some type of bearish reversal candle to suggest that sellers are ready to try to use their muscle out here. And then we need to see levels of support being broken. If your question is today and all time, is today the high out there? Well, we don't have that signal as a 147 in the afternoon. No reason for me to guess what it's going to look like. At the end of the day, I would be able to tell you whether we had a bearish reversal candle. It doesn't look like it. Uh, we're going to. I had mentioned in the NQ. Now, interestingly enough, uh, the NQ, Jay, this is for you out there and everybody else, uh, the NQ is attempting to form a new TAS day profile. The top of the box would be 91.1475. The bottom is 89.40. It's a bearish structured profile, meaning if we were to see a close below 90.27 out there, that would suggest that sellers should be able to push price down to 89.40. Now, pushing price down to 89.40, somebody might say, boy, that's a really good retracement considering where price had traded to yesterday. The reality is, yeah, it'd be a good retracement or a decent retracement or some kind of retracement, but it doesn't say that it would be the high. Doesn't wouldn't say there would be a change in trend. You'd need to see a close below 89.40. Now, here's the caveat. I'm using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool, and this profile may not form. The ES Mini yesterday was doing the same thing, trying to attempt to form a new profile. But by day's end, it did not. That may be the same thing going on inside the NQ. I don't know. We'll know tomorrow. Maybe I'll know later this evening. But right now, we've got to go with the data. The data is correct. And sellers are trying to defend 91.14, and buyers are trying to support 89.40. So, Roger, I hope that that answers your question. It's about as best that I could do out there. Um, but feel free to write back, and I'll be happy to look at things further, although probably should write back tomorrow because we're not going to have a lot of time um, as we're going into the last segment here shortly. Hector writes in. He wants to take a look at NBEV. And uh, so as we, oh, why did I write that in there, the wrong chart? That's okay. I'll go back and figure that one out afterwards let me come back here to this and type in nbev and then see what uh, hector's question is is where does nbev have to close the week to be a positive move to the top side hmm that's a can you give me an easier question please um Look, closing above 186, that's the top of its daily profile formed two days ago and right now it's trading above it um it traded, it closed above it yesterday, it closed above it the day before. This is suggesting that NBEV does want to move to higher price. It also found support at the bottom of its monthly profile, which is a buck seventy-four out there. So that's suggesting that price does want to move higher. Higher to where? 
I would say 265 to 267 is the uh, next price target to the upside. Now, if this closes above 194 today, 194 Hector, and the fuel injectors, well, 194 happens to be a TD nine count breakdown level. And if it can hold that today and hold it tomorrow, $2.37 becomes your price target. And I think for you, that's the type of positive feedback that you wanted. And that was for New Age Beverages Corp. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 103, S&P 5 points. So let's go back to John in Sarasota. He had requested to take a look at a uh, ticker symbol XPDA. That's Expeditors International. Washington. It's above the uh, top of the daily profile, weekly profile, and monthly profile. Uh, so this is looking uh, very, very good. EXPD, if we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here, looks like this could be forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, that pattern would give you, well, uh, it, there's a small one and a larger one out here. But price, it looks like it's going to head back to its highs out there in the $81-ish uh, level out here. John, I don't see any topping pattern on any of the other time frames, so looks like to me that's where it's headed to. We had another request to take a look at uh, CGC, that is Canopy Growth out there. That's for one of our dinners. 
Let's go take a look at it. CGC, see what it is uh, doing. Uh, it's trading above its uh, daily, trading above its weekly. A close today, a close tomorrow above 24.49 would suggest a, a change in trend. If I look at the daily time frame chart out here for canopy growth, today is going to be bar number six of a TD setup nine count. Uh, I would assume there's an A to B equals CD pattern. A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out here that is in play. That gives you price projections. The one to one is 26.92. The one to 1.272 is 29.21. So it does look like uh, that's where price would like to head to. If I look at the weekly time frame chart with price being above its weekly profiles, is there a TD nine count breakdown area that may be the next target? And there is, does have that nice road momentum indicator bottom out here, 41.07 is the uh, price target out there a k steve is that a okay with you i hope that it is well folks been a wonderful wednesday um you know uh, the markets just can even though markets are pushing higher doing less relative energy uh it's okay until the sellers show up and they may not show up but if they do show up well, that could uh, be a problem, considering we're in that unfavorable seasonal cycle of January. It may not be if, only a matter of when. Stay tuned, folks. Two great hours following your favorite polar bear, David White. After that, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with you on Thirsty Thursday. So have a wonderful Wednesday.